Wagwan people, um, this episode was recorded a while ago and it was recorded before the news came out about the charges against Mars Bridges. We do not in any way condone or support what this guy has been accused of, what this guy has done is absolutely disgraceful. So when I said he's my favorite rapper, I take that statement back completely because obviously I cannot co-sign someone who has done what he has done. So just bear that in mind um, in case anyone gets the wrong idea from this episode that was recorded way back in the past. So anything about Miles Bridges, ignore it. I don't believe he should be in the league. I don't believe he should be offered a contract. And um, I hope you enjoy the rest of the episode though because we get into a few good things. But all in all, you might want to just skip this one and go straight to episode 125 because 125, we break down everything you need to know about free agency. 124 was kind of in a weird, awkward space before deals have been signed. I don't even I don't even care if you watch this one or not. 125 is what you want to hear. You know the vibes. Another episode of the Hoop Genius Podcast presented by NBA 2K22. Moment C, BJ Armstrong, the NBA offseason. Free agency's opening real soon. Things are developing, BJ. Things are developing. What are you hearing out here? It's a lot of talk. A lot of talk. A lot of promises. A lot of what coulds, shoulds, orders, ifs. Hurry up, and I will call you back. <laughs> <laughs> well, we saw a deal go down last night. We, you know, we saw a deal go down last night. The Knicks are trading Nerlis Noel and Alec Burks to the Pistons, your Detroit Pistons. The Knicks will unload $19 million in salary, clearing the way to try and sign Jalen Brunson, who we had a great chat about on yesterday's episode. Now, for the Pistons, you get some veterans, you absorb the salary. It's not like you were going to do anything with the salary, but... You know, that's kind of what these rebuilding teams do. For the Knicks, risky strategy. What if Jalen Brunson doesn't sign there? But if he does, I don't know how that's going to work out. We spoke about this before. Um, but our friend Chris Haynes came with a report, BJ. Did you see what Chris said? What did he say? Sources close to Jalen Brunson's camp say... It's just closed down. Sources close to say that Jalen Brunson's camp say that he feels like he has another level that he can reach. Uh, he cannot reach next to the ball dominant Luka Doncic. We spoke about this yesterday. What do, what, what do you make of all this? What do you, what do you make of all of this going well, on with the know, Knicks you, and you, clearing this up? You know me, you know me when it comes to the sources. Okay, great. Sounds good, sounds right. Can I, I'll, I'll can see, I share I'll a story? See, yeah, sure. Can I share a story? Me and BJ, we had dinner uh, out in Boston a few weeks ago, right? And I said to BJ, I said, where do you think player X is going? I'm not going to say which player it was we were talking about at the time. I said, where do you think this guy's going? And BJ said, this is one of the biggest flexes I've seen. He goes, do you really want to know? He just pulls out his phone and he just calls. What's <laughs> happening in the summer? And I just sat there. <laughs> shocked like what the hell is going on because i'm like coming up with all these theories and i'm like this team's got cap space and this team could trade and this team's got job picks and he goes ah man listen picks up his phone and he just calls the guy and he says yo long time where are you going this summer and then just... <laughs> i just wanted to share that with the people <laughs> you know it's uh you know well it, it's Look, I, I, I love the game. You love the game. Our listeners love the game. And it's a fun game when you can get the rumors and the theories and <laughs> who's right, who's wrong. <laughs> and then you could, you know, flex on your, you know, your friends or, you know, wherever talking about the game. But you know what? At a certain age, you're like, OK, just get to it. <laughs> <laughs> so when I hear the sources... I cut to it. So I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to flex. I don't even know what that means. I'm not trying to flex. I just, okay, what's going on here? Like what's going on so we can move on, but it's a fun game. 
<laughs> what I think is going on here with the Knicks is the following. As I look at their roster, clearly they're making a run, and it's obvious it's Jalen Brunson. So I think Jalen Brunson now has two options, or I should say Dallas has two options, whether he's just going to sign and go into their cap space, which can be above $25 million. Now, the interesting thing about this here is from a, you know, I'm looking at it now from the, the standpoint or the viewpoint of the executives. Clearly, the Dallas Mavericks, they capped out of saying, this is how far we will go. With yeah. Jalen Brunson. Because if they give him that max, like $30 million contract, it will cost them $130 million in the salary yeah. and the luxury tax for luxury one tax season. 160. Yes. And you just can't do that. Yeah. Okay. You just can't do that. You, you, you can't do that. So clearly, I'm going to say without knowing, it's probably somewhere between 22 maybe $23 million a year that they said, this is how far we're willing to go. And then if not, we're ready to move forward. So I think that's going to give them two options. Either they're just going to let him walk or they're going to do a signing trade to try to get something back. Maybe they get Fournier or, or something back. Who knows? Okay. If I were them, I would try to get the kid Cam Reddish. I mean, but that's another discussion. Yeah. Now, when you look at the Knicks roster now, you're saying, how are they going to fill out the rest of this roster? Because if they give Jalen Brunson the entire. All the money. Know, <laughs> all, all, all the, the money, the, the, all the space. Yeah, it, all the space. That just leaves them with minimums. And you're saying. It's the Lakers. Okay. Without LeBron. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's <the> Jalen Brunson. <laughs> so you're saying, oh, okay. Like. But, you know, so I, I'm just going to be patient because sometimes you you see things and you go, it doesn't make sense. And then it'll come later. So I'm going to assume that there's another component to this. That I'm not aware of. And so, I'm going to assume that Jalen, which can get all the money you can get, you know, if you could get the whole 30, get it. But I don't know how that's going to work out for the team and the organization if you give it all to him, because that only leaves them with minimums for the rest I of mean, the I mean, I don't know how a big three of Jalen Brunson, Julius Randle, and RJ Barrett is going to fare in that Eastern Conference. I don't know. I don't know. Um, here's a few things that are interesting, according to the sources that PJ doesn't yes. want to hear about. If Jalen Brunson leaves, the Dallas Mavericks would like to bring in Goran Dragic, Luka Doncic, Slovenian teammates play alongside him in that backcourt. Excuse me. The sources also say New York is expected to re-sign Mitchell Robinson to a multi-year deal in free agency. Um, okay. The uh, the price point per sources, a five-year deal at more money than Fred Van Fleet. So more than 22 a year is what he's looking for. Um, teams who, who do, are you talking about? Jalen Brunson. Oh, okay. So, so more than 22. Uh, teams do not think that Jalen Brunson is the last move for the Knicks. Opposing teams see Brunson and DeJounte Murray as an attractive fit in the backcourt. We spoke about that on yesterday's show. We're not going to go into that again because it's very similar, very similar vibes. Um, the New York Knicks are expected to present Jalen Brunson a four-year offer in a vicinity of 110 million, which is crazy. I think that Jalen Brunson needs to say thank you to the Utah Jazz's defense because he looked amazing against them. And now he's getting paid big bags. <laughs> so if Jalen Brunson does go, you can laugh out loud, BJ. It's okay. I can see you smiling. <laughs> it, it, well, it's, it, it, he's, doing, we, he's, he is part of your, you know, your tribe now when he, when you say secure the bag, secure, I mean, he he's, exactly he's becoming the CEO he, of secure the bag society. You know what I mean? Like, yes. Anyway, yes. The, the Mavericks are considered amongst the most serious suitors for Gary Payton a second as well. Um, who will be on, on the move. Um, but here, here's my thing. Okay. So if the report is true that you want to get away from Luka Doncic, cause you think you can get even better is going and playing with Julius Randall really going to get you there. I think I said this yesterday. I don't know about all of that. And then Julius Randall, RJ Barrett, two left-handed players who like to attack from the right-hand side, both need the ball in their hands. That doesn't leave much room for you to unlock a new level that you think. Whereas the Dallas offense is very guard centric. Like when Luka was out, 
you're basically playing a five out offense and you can penetrate, get to your spots, get your shots up or done for your teammates. So I don't know how that's all going to work out. And then apparently teams, uh, the Knicks have been calling teams around the league, asking if anyone would be interested in Mr. Julius Randall. I don't know what's happening with the Knicks, but let's say they do sign Jalen Brunson and they run it with this team. I, What do I think? Fifth, sixth, maybe people are saying seventh or eighth. Cause if you look at the Eastern conference, the Celtics ain't going nowhere. Philly are going to be good. The Bucks are going to be healthy again. They're going to be good. The Heat are still going to be there. The Hawks are looking to improve. You know, there's, there's a lot of teams. The Cavs are going to be all healthy again. So they're up there. That's already six teams that we've listed. And then we've got the Raptors who are going to be better. We've got the Bulls who might make some moves to improve. That's eight teams. Well, I think Cleveland. I mean, Kim, come on, Cleveland. I say Cleveland. We can't leave out Cleveland. Okay. I, I say Cleveland. Cleveland. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I say Cleveland is part of eight teams. So then, what, the Knicks going to be, what, the ninth best team after spending, <laughs> after giving Jalen Brunson $110 million? I don't know. Maybe he does unlock a whole new level and catapults them to the top of the Eastern Conference. And everyone's just wrong about this. I don't know, BJ. I, I really don't know, but I feel like we've talked about Brunson a lot. Um, let's talk about another trade that happened because we, we spoke about Brunson yesterday, the day before. And but Should we talk about another trade? Absolutely. Involving the Denver Nuggets. The Denver Nuggets... Okay have sent Monte Morris and Will Barton to Washington in a deal for Contavious Colwell Pope and Ish Smith. What are your thoughts about this trade? Interesting. You know, it's an interesting trade. I'm just hearing about it. You know, they're sending Will Barton, Monte Morris for Pope and Ish Smith. This looks like a financial move to me. To save money this- for the Nuggets? Yes, that's what it looks like. To that's me. that's interesting considering their general manager just left them to go to the Timberwolves and reportedly was concerned about their lack of willingness to spend in order to contend. Interesting to me. That's what it looks like to me. That's you know, that's what it looks like. I I, I, I you're going to need death. You're going to need death, especially with their two. They have not one, but two of their big three coming back this year so, on massive deals. So that's why I like this deal, though, because with Jamal Murray coming back and Michael Porter Jr. coming back, I love Will Barton's game. He's he's fun to watch. He, he can get you buckets, but he needs the ball in his hands, whereas Contavious Colwell right. Pope is more of a 3 and D. I'm going to just catch and shoot this three, get back and defend. So with... Michael, uh, Jamal Murray, Michael Paul Jr. taking more of the ball. I think KCP might be a better fit, and he's much better defensively, in my opinion, than Will Barn at this stage of his career. And then in terms of Ish Smith, I think, okay, you're losing Monte Morris, who is a good guard, but I'm assuming that those minutes are going to go to Bones Highland to try and develop his game. Because for the Nuggets to really take that leap, they need Bones Highland to take the leap into a Tyrese Maxey, Jordan Poole kind of space. You know, because he's right now he shows flashes of it in some games. But if he can consistently do what Tyrese Maxey did this year for the Philly Sixers, then Denver can be a real threat if they can allow him. Who are you talking about? Who are you talking about? Bones? Bones, Bones Highland. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, and then I think Ish Smith just really takes the minutes from Compazzo, who, who didn't have a great season. Um, but also Ish Smith, BA, saying an NBA record. Do you know what NBA record he's saying? No. If he suits up for the Denver Nuggets, it's an NBA record 13th team that he's played for in his NBA career. Two more, and he's completed 50% of the NBA. That's pretty, uh, it's, you know what? Uh, it's always tough getting traded, but you know what? Give him credit. He's, he's, you he's know, he's been a good player. Yeah, he's been a good player in all the places he's been. So give him, give him credit. And I don't really understand this trade. If I'm if but I'm a from Denver a, Nuggets from a basketball fan. perspective, well, if, if I'm a Denver Nuggets, I I think the Will Barton and Monte Morris seems to give me the depth and size that I'm looking for, more than Caldwell Pope and Ishmael. But maybe there's something I'm missing here. You know, who knows? Maybe Bones Highland is the guy that they want to play in their clean. I don't know. But what I do know 
is when you have guys coming back from significant injuries, it's better to have players behind them that are capable until that player comes back. And, and you would hope that those two players that you mentioned would come back and they come back at a high level. But with the injuries that they're, that we're talking about, I don't expect that. And I'm going to give them a year or two before we can make that assessment. You just don't come back from an ACL or significant. I think the one kid had the back injury. Yeah. He's had that since the draft. That's um... yeah. You you know, you, you, you just, you never know, but again, we'll have to wait and see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm just, uh, I'm just looking for a post right now, BJ, because I saw something interesting on Instagram. It it made me chuckle a little bit. Um, Just about Miles Bridges, who we spoke about yesterday. Um, Miles. And and, and as soon as, as soon as we spoke about that, literally seconds after we finished recording, Mitch Kupchak of the Charlotte Hornets said that they would love to bring Miles back to the team after we had a little back and forth about it. Okay. Here is an Instagram post from... A member of Miles Bridges' rap group. This is how I know the NBA oh, is like a reality a show, right? A member okay. of Miles Bridges' rap group called RTB Capo. He posted on Instagram. I'm going to read you the quote. I'm not going to rap it for you. I'm just going to read it to you. He says, forgot I put the shrooms in my food. Man, it got me tripping. If Charlotte don't drop the bag, we go into the Pistons. I don't know what to make of this because the Pistons have just used their cap space to absorb Noel and I don't, I don't know who follows the NBA that detailed, but but it made me laugh. It it, it made me laugh. <laughs> the part that made me laugh the most was that he forgot that he put the shrooms in his food and now he's tripping. That would be a horrible, horribly uncomfortable yeah, experience to accidentally yeah. eat magic mushrooms in your food. But if Charlotte don't drop the bag, we go into the Pistons. Assuming he's talking about his fellow rap group member, Miles Bridges. Um, and he posted that underneath a picture of him and Bridges, what looks like our party in conversation. Um, PJ, <laughs> what do you think? Uh, yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to leave that way, you know, <laughs> I'm going to leave that way, you know, I, I'm just, you know, I'm gonna leave that one alone. I'm gonna leave that one alone. You know, <laughs> I can I'm leave that one alone. I'm gonna leave that one alone. Mo, I'm gonna leave that one alone. I don't know what to say. I can no longer see what the I post. will it say. Like what I want to say this here. Here's what I'm gonna say. Mm-hmm. J. Cole had the best verse this year. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. Which one? Which one? On uh, uh, the one on uh, where he shouts John Moran. No, no, no. I think it's uh, Benny the uh, on, on Benny the on Butcher. We say Benny the Butcher. Yeah. On the on... night I was born, the yeah, rain yeah, was yeah. born. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That was yeah, hard. No, no. Uh, that I, I, I'm just going to put things in his proper context now. I, I mean, I mean, that you know was cool. I mean? but... That was the best verse of the year. That was the <laughs> best verse. If we of the talk year. about the best verse of saying. the year. The best bar of the year for me is still Miles Bridges. Took her on okay, a trip, then fine. I spend her like Siakam. <laughs> I okay. locked her out. I'm uh, David Stern now. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he said, on the night I was born, the um, rain was poured. I'm going to tell you this. I'm gonna, I'm God tell you this. was crying. Lightning struck. Your Power guy, um, outages. Spars was flying. You know, I'm just saying. But what am my, I? Doing? My favorite just... bar. No, my favorite bar this year, BJ, is from your guy, Marlon Craft. He says, "I'm the rap game's Jeff Van Gundy, disgusted okay, by the seat I'm in." Man, that hey. made me laugh. That made me laugh for real. <laughs> but it looks like Miles Bridges is going to be going back to the, uh, going back to the um, Charlotte Hornets, uh, which will be fun. Which will be fun. It also looks like. Kevon Looney will be getting a $10 million a deal, $10 million a year deal from the Golden State Warriors. Um, Interesting. Now, this brings up something that I heard Draymond Green talk about. I saw a clip on social media saying that the luxury tax is unfair. And he said, I, did you hear this? 
No, I didn't. So he I, said, I could, uh, yeah. he said there should Go be ahead. different levels of luxury tax payments depending on if the team shouldn't be penalized for drafting good players. So the Warriors for drafting these guys or finding all these guys shouldn't pay the same amount of luxury tax as teams who just get free agents in and then pay the luxury tax. Because in all fairness, there is a big difference between like the Golden State Warriors and, for example, the Brooklyn Nets. The Golden State Warriors, almost every player on that roster, they were drafted by the Warriors. Obviously, Wiggins was traded for and then a handful of you know minimum free agent guys. Um, but now when it comes to renewing them, they just get an insane luxury tax bill. And he was saying that there should be some sort of different quota for teams who have the homegrown players, in a sense, and the luxury tax payments that they pay. What do you think about that? I, I, I don't understand. I, I need more context. Okay. Um, so it's okay, like... Okay, so, you, so, so let, 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 let me get this straight. Yeah. So you go to... You and I go to the lottery. Yes. There is a lottery ball that goes through some type of system system and then i should be rewarded because mine came out four and, and yours came out three well i, I mean to, fair, to be fair like a lot of these guys like no, 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 no. come on looney was found later on in the draft okay so. that that's that's fine that, that that but there's luck involved here there's yeah. luck so so i'm rewarded for luck like i threw a half four shot and then i'm rewarded for that like i don't understand yeah. like Okay, that's fine. If that's what you think, great. Sounds good. In other news, I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> in other news, Tyler Hero is reportedly going to get twenty-five million dollars per year, and Victor Oladipo is not expected to return to Miami Heat. He's said to have interest from Washington, Denver, and Detroit in the salary range of the taxpayer mid-level exception. What do you think about Tyler Harrow? Do you think that he will end up starting for the Heat this year? Because he's expressed that he wants to be a starting player. Pat Riley said, come into training camp and prove it then. Do you see him being shifted to the starting lineup for the Miami Heat? You know, Miami is interesting because they've surrounded themselves with excellent professionals. They really, they really have. They, they have excellent professionals. And Tyler Hero is a big part of that. Every coach, whether they want to admit it or not, but we will say it here, would love to have a player that will give them the comfort that they need to know if my starters don't have it going, that you come off. There's a very valuable place in this league for that. But as a young player like Tyler Hero, I get it. You want to be a starter. I think Tyler Hero has found his niche in the NBA. As a sixth man. He, he is a very important part of the team. And his versatility coming off the bench, to me, is way more valuable than him being a starter. Why? Because when you're a starter, you have to manage the game, right? You got to take care of Jimmy Butler. You got to take care of Bam. Kyle Lowry's got to, and then where does that leave him? When he comes off the bench, it's about him. Yeah. I, I, I don't, but I get it. When you're young, you don't see the totality of the, so being a player who has been a starter and coming off the bench, if I could do it over again, you know, and I, I have no regrets, right? You know, you, you, you're a starter and so forth. But Having to play every night and having to make sure that I get this guy 30 points, <laughs> making sure I got to get this other guy 25 points, mm -hmm. make sure I get the big fella the proper amount of touches. Such and such made his first three shots coming off the bench now because I know he's coming off the bench. I got to get him the ball in a short amount of time because he's because the guy that he plays behind is going to play 38 minutes a night. Mm -hmm. And so that only leaves him with <laughs> 10. What? What? seven, eight minutes or 10 minutes to play, okay? When you come off the bench, you don't have to worry about that. You just play. You just, hey, I come off the bench. If I make my first three shots, that just extended my run for fourth. Now coach is like, okay, he's got it going now. 
mm-hmm. and you play. You 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 just focus in on your matchup, the guy, and you go and play and you do your thing because you're going to get your 28 to 24 minutes no matter what. That's sustainable. Doing the other part, Mo, you had to have a, 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 a got to have a, you know, it, it takes a, it takes a, a certain level of talent, physical talent to do that, right? Because you have to be able to impact the game without scoring. This kid is a terrific player. He's a terrific scorer. Plays off the dribble now. Da 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 da. I don't know how impactful he is to the game without scoring at this stage of his career. And once you become a starter, you began to understand what I'm saying here because you're playing with better players. You have to manage the game. You have matchups. You have all these things going on, the game within the game. And that always starts on the defensive end. Mm -hmm. I think Tyler Hero is a terrific, an amazing player. And, and you know what? We've had a guest here who un, who understood that. One of the Jamal Crawford. maybe the Jamal greatest Crawford. six man, one of the greatest yeah, six men to ever play the game. And, and Jamal Crawford figured out his niche. You figure that out because let me tell you something. I don't care who starts the game. That's about who finishes it? Who finishes it? And Tyler Hero, in my humble opinion, has earned the right at this stage of his career on a championship caliber team to finish every game. Mm -hmm. So for me, he's going to play starter minutes no matter what. And that's how I see it. And and the way his game is right now, it's not to say that he may get better on the defensive end, whether he becomes a, a, a big one or or two guard or whatever he is, he's going to finish the game. And so to me, that's the most important thing, but I've been in those, I've been there, understand that. And and it's when you're young, you want to, you want to start, I get it. But right now I think, I think it's bigger than him. And it looks like the team is going to reward him no matter what. Yeah. 25 M's I'll happily go off the bench. Um, Let's finish with this BJ yesterday, yesterday, Marked exactly 22 years from what? I have no idea. You, yourself, drafting Jamal Crawford. Oh. Well, well, the Cavs drafted him, (laughs) and then you traded for him on draft night, right? Yeah, yes. So, you know, speaking of great sixth man, what was it that made you pick Jamal to, to the Bulls when you were working there? Well, it was obvious when you saw him, that he had the ability to play off the dribble. That was the first thing. And not only score, but he could make plays for others off the dribble. The thing that really made him unique and intriguing as a player was his size. Because he could handle like a point guard, but he could score. He could score one-on-one situations. He could play screen roll. And what you look for players at the guard position are are those players who can play with five seconds or less. Because when the ball comes back to them, they have to be able to create and get up a shot on a short shot, on a short shot clock. Jamal could do that in his sleep. He could, he did that from day one. Now, all the other things, spacing, how to play and create a shot with three dribbles other than the, the eight dribbles when he first came in the league getting stronger to take the bump, learning the pull-up and all of the angles. That took time. But he could get a shot up against any defense from day one. Bucket. And still to he this could, day. He could do that. Yeah, he, 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 that's, that was just, that's just a gift. Like, every player has a gift. He could do that, and he could play screen roll. So, you know, I always encouraged him when he first came in to be a point guard because of his size. Jamal, Jamal had, he had, he has great length and great size, but he fell in love. He fell in love with scoring. And how could you blame him? I mean, I, I don't, the, he, 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 I mean, he could score that basketball with the best of them. And um, what an amazing career, you know, he just had an incredible career, but that's, that was the thing that attracted us to him. You saw that immediately 
you saw that wasn't something that you, you know, everyone likes to work on their game. So Jamal had that day one. <laughs> okay. He yeah. could he could score the bat. And you know what? Some of the best tr- one-on-one sessions was him and Ron Artest. Yeah. Ultimate defense. This was a, ultimate offense. This was this was a young Ron Artest. Okay. Yeah. And when those guys would play one-on-one, okay, you you you're you're seeing. I mean, at the time, we didn't know this. Jamal ended up being, what, sixth man in the year, what, how many times? Three, I think. And then Ron Artest was defensive player of the year. Yeah. And he was always one of the elite defenders. So Jamal had this confidence of knowing no one's going to be better at guarding than Ron Artest. And if I could do this here, and those guys, those guys were awesome. So... You know, it, it, those were terrific young players. We had a young Elton Brand, a young, um, I think we traded Elton Brand. I think, yeah, I think Jamal and no, those you, guys played a year or two. I think you guys had Elton Brand, yeah. Tyson Chandler. Yeah, Elton Brand, Tyson Chandler, Eddie Curry. You know, it, it, it was just, it was a fun group. Um, and Jamal was, you know, he, him, Tyson and those guys, they, 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 they were fun. Well, I'm going to leave the episode with this, see, as we were talking about rap lyrics earlier. i got one more for you, BJ. One more from the oh, man God. Miles Bridges himself. He goes, Brody Real took the charge, Shane Battier. Bands make her ass clap, now we playing patty cake. Man, this guy might be the funniest rapper in the whole world. Um, I'm going to go listen to some Miles Bridges, get this work out here. BJ, another episode in the books. <laughs> No doubt some free agency news will break any second now after we finish recording, but we'll be back tomorrow <laughs> breaking down more. Oh. Hit us up on Twitter. Let us know what your thoughts. Where do you think these players are going? And let us know your Shout favorite. out to Miles Bridges <laughs> from Michigan. Your favorite you know, shout out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, all right, cool. Um, you guys know what to do. I'm going to tell you to subscribe, review, leave a comment, leave a like, all of that good stuff. But most importantly, till tomorrow when we'll be back talking more free agency, more trades, get buckets. <laughs>